Hi guys, I am Khushboo from Doctor Behind the Scenes and Keshav is in another country altogether. So I will be doing the live and uh, today we have someone who you all can relate to. Guys, we did this session on our Instagram and these are some reviews by our audience. They absolutely loved it and I am sure that if you keep watching, you will love it too. So my name is Khushbu Kalani and he is also uh, Kalani, but we are not related. <laughs> hello, hello, doctor. Hello, hello, Hi, doctor. how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm all right. <clears throat> so finally, so nice to meet you on Instagram and face to face. And we have been talking for quite some time and I'm, I'm sure that today's live will be worth it. Because you all will be able to relate to our doctor, Shritanshu Karani. Uh, can you hear me, doctor? Yeah, I can. So, what should I call you, doctor or Shritanshu or however just you call, like it? Just call me Shritanshu. Doctor is too formal for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. So, uh, give us your introduction first. All right. So, uh, I'm Shritanshu. Um <clears throat> I am an Indian doctor working in the NHS. Uh, I joined NHS in 2019, beginning of 2019. And I came here to UK via the PLAB route. <clears throat> so I appeared for my PLAB exams in 2018, got GMC registered in 2018 as well, started applying for jobs. And I came here, uh, joined Blackburn Hospital, which was my first job. And I'm still continuing here at the moment. And I'm joining radiology training from August this year uh, at Nottingham Hospital. So um, why we decided to do this session is because uh, uh, Kushbu herself is a medical student. Um, sorry. Is the voice okay now? Please give me a thumbs up if the voice is okay for both of us. Um, I can hear you. Uh, you can hear me pretty all right. well. All right. All right. We'll just continue uh, with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So there is a comment there. Are you an FMG? Yes, I am. So, um, um, yeah, just like Kushbu, I did my uh, undergraduation in a foreign country. I completed my MBBS from Nepal and uh, uh, it's about uh, Nepal. Uh, so like Kushbu is pursuing her MBBS from Ukraine. Uh, there are a bit of uh, this bit difference between uh, Nepal and uh, other countries because uh, the major difference being that the internship from Nepal is uh, recognized in India. So I did not have to complete, do my internship again in India. However, I did have to give my uh, FMG exam uh, <clears throat> to get registered with the Indian Medical Council. So even though Nepal follows the same curriculum as India, uh, mm -hmm. it, is not, it is not directly recognized. You still have to appear for the FMG exam. So which I okay. did in 2017. All right. All right. All right. That was such a great interview. I mean, that was such a great introduction. And I think a lot of things are clear over here that you were you are an FMG and currently pursuing yes, your PG in uh, UK. So I am so glad that you are here because we have had so many people uh, from other countries, but not specifically from India to give us their insight how uh, UK is treating them and the whole journey. So with an Indian, we can have a better connect to understand and to relate. And the plus point is that you are an FMG. So uh, we have a huge circle of FMGs. And in fact, all the Indian doctors, uh, I mean, uh, currently doing their uh, MBBS or MD in India, I think they will also be able to relate because in the end, if you're going to UK, you will be an IMG only. So IMG is, guys, international medical graduate. So I think everyone will be able to relate to him. So um, we'll divide this live into two parts. So we'll know more about your college life and from college life when you came back to India and then from India, how you went to UK. So all our que questions will be in that pattern. And I hope that we can take all your questions too. These questions that I have made are from your requests, and let's let's go ahead, Doctor Shitanshu. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, about your college life, how long was it? What was the curriculum? Was it same or of the same standard as India? 
and tell us more about your curriculum and your life in uh, your college nepal so as i mentioned before nepal uh, follows uh, a similar curriculum as india the total duration of the mbbs program is 5 and a half years which is exactly mm-hmm. like india so you have 4 and a half years and one year of internship okay, okay. Uh, the only difference from an indian curriculum is that the third year is one and a half years rather than the second year which is one and a half years in india okay now i was fortunate that my college it was owned and run by an indian uh, he was from andhra pradesh okay. and most of my uh, most of my faculties the hods they were from india as well and they were quite wow. qualified most of them retired professors from india so um but yeah ultimately it uh, used to depend on yourself whether you want to give whether you want to study or you don't want to study okay uh, that's it's that's everywhere. true for that's true for any college so if you want to you know like it's up to you completely all right so um i joined my medical school in 2011 okay i completed it in and towards the end of 2017 all right okay. and uh, as mentioned before i appeared for my fmge in 2017 itself during internship all right so okay i had begin the journey to towards coming to uk during my internship itself okay so uh, first i so did will, fmge so mm-hmm. uh, we'll cut to that part later i have so many questions on your college life before yeah. uh some students really ask us like how did you manage were you um, disheartened that you did not get a seat in india did it i mean did it shake your confidence in medicine or uh, to become a doctor or how was it well initially yes i would say because uh, what happened after completing my 12th uh, i appeared for the neat exam and the state cet exam i did not mm-hmm. make it okay so this was my first attempt i took out a drop year i applied again for the next year so i did not get in again okay so that was my second attempt so two years mm-hmm. gone gone right there in india so yes definitely i was a bit disheartened but um ultimately so i had two options either i could take up a private seat in india which was very expensive for me at that time so i decided to uh, i got to know about nepal from a few of my seniors and my dad's colleagues so i decided to pursue my uh, medical degree in nepal okay now um as i mentioned so up till so i was still a bit disheartened up till the third year okay all right first second third year so till third year my confidence you know was on the lower side i was never really confident about myself and obviously having seen so many failures because i had given so many exams and i couldn't yeah. clear any of them so yes this totally under confidence relate. yeah so uh, yeah i'm sure i'm sure so it <laughs> went on till third year okay and then after third year while coming to the final year this is when i realized that uh, i cannot just continue like this okay i need to change right. i cannot just keep mm-hmm. focusing myself on the past so i had to adopt i stopped thinking about any of my failures okay and here i am today not worried about anything because i have seen fail uh, i've failed so many times that it doesn't affect me anymore to be honest <laughs> that's such a wonderful line i believe and i think we should all preach this if we can't uh, see and feel the failure i don't think there will be any fruit in a uh, successful life uh, so so what about you being a student over there how was your attitude uh, of course in the first 3 years it was a little dull and you were not uh studying properly but what happened after that what did the one year change so i don't know it's just like you know you say like you just and wake up some day and you realize okay and so if i talk about my college life i was never you know i i mentioned in one of my posts as well uh, that i have always been a backbencher in school in college and my attendance was on the lower side <laughs> so i've never been you know uh, uh much into that uh, the academic side of the college i used to study myself the only thing i used to make sure was that i was attending the boards and clinics regularly all right but all i right. used i used to hate the classroom uh, lectures and you know i i know many of you could relate with that so uh <laughs> did but, it give you any advantage the postings or uh... i would say yes class. yes if you are in medical school at the moment please do not miss your uh, ward postings do not miss your clinics okay they are very important because the, that is what is going to help you in the future okay because once you become a doctor 
all you need is you need to be really good on your, with your clinical side rather than your theor- theoretical knowledge right so like uh, when you were in your final year how did you did you study specifically for uk did you know that you wanted to go to uk after this or so it was not just about uk i want i was sure mm-hmm. that i want to go outside india i don't want to pursue my post graduate training in india so i was absolutely sure about that okay right. but i did not i did not actually start preparing for uk until i came into my internship because final year was quite intense you had okay. to uh, study a lot okay you had to attend the clinics you had to be really good with your uh, clinical side as well because you had to face practical exam as well so which were quite really? tough uh, during my time so i never focused about uk until i came in internship so final year was all about uh, college studies and everything never about anything else and uh, what about like uh, studying specifically for uk like when did you prepare that just in your internship period in india or it was in nepal so most of it was in india actually so because uh, the internship in nepal uh, so i used to come back and forth from nepal and india okay, um, okay. i uh and during that time itself so i was uh, so i took uh, i took it step wise okay my first step was clearing fmg second step i knew was ielts third was plap mm-hmm. 1 and fourth was plap 2 so i was never rushing into it okay the biggest mistake which we make is try and rush into things i have been there and i am an asian mm-hmm. you are an asian i know that urge yes. to finish everything quickly we just want to be get done with everything uh, fast right. and quickly so yeah. never do that never rush into things take everything uh step by step okay so my first focus was obviously to mm-hmm. clear fmg okay uh-huh. so i appeared for fmg somewhere in my mid uh, internship period okay and once i was done with that i started preparing for ielts and as i mentioned i took it step by so fmg ielts plap 1 plap 2 for fmg there is like a big debate which resource you used and did you study it along while preparing for plap also and there was uh, one very interesting question if you work really hard with uh, the preparations of fmg or neat pg and if you don't get in so would that preparation be sufficient to clear plap 1 So the thing about FMG is, I'll be very honest here. Plap one is much easier than FMG exam. Okay, because the only reason being, Plap one doesn't cover most of the basic sciences. Okay, so you are only so most of Plap one is going to be medicine, pediatrics, ops and gynae, surgery, a little bit of pharmacology, and a little bit of anatomy. That's it. It doesn't cover physiology. It doesn't cover microbiology. most of the basic subjects are not covered okay a little bit of ent okay. and ophthalmology so it's more the clinical subjects that is why it okay. is much easier than fmg because fmg is a vast exam it covers everything you have studied till date it's like uh, a small you can say a younger sibling of uh, neat pg okay right <laughs> right totally and uh, what about cv did you do anything specific uh, in your school i mean your school i mean college life for plap i mean for your future well i don't think so anything i have haven't done anything so <laughs> my cv whatever cv i have prepared i prepared it in 4 months after coming to uk i haven't done okay. anything in college i had no clue what to do in college except i i only knew about the exams that's all i knew i never knew about what to, you need to do because it was more because i did not know what specialty i'm going to pursue in the future you know right so uh, right so a person who has no idea he can never be late i mean no person can ever be late it's just when you start you just start right yeah yeah so not uh, we shouldn't be so uh, careful about all these steps of course we need to study properly we need to be attentive in all the postings and all the classes but we should first care about today the present and then think about the other Our, yeah. our future in fact right yeah. <laughs> so of course you did not give uh, next because it is an upcoming exam what would you suggest to students and how should they go if like if they are going to give uh, fmg first and then go to plab so we are transitioning from your college life to the indian period and then the uk so tell us how for about the fmg how one should prepare and how should they study side by side for plab 
Okay. So the f- first and foremost thing is you need to be absolutely sure what and where you are going to pursue your p- postgraduate studies. If you have decided upon UK, okay, mm-hmm. then you need to make sure that you're not giving up on that. All right. Because I have had a lot of queries with people from my juniors as well, that uh, they want to come to UK, but they end up giving the Indian exam and they are like, we'll think about it later. Do not do that. First, you need to make sure that, okay, is it India where you want to study further or is, are you going to come to UK? Because that decides a lot of things for you. All right. So the first thing uh, coming to FMG exam. Um, So if you're obviously uh, FMG is the only route to get registered in India for us, for uh, FMGs like us. Okay. So uh, at my, during my time, uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a long time. It's been like four years when I gave my FMG, but uh, I think I used to study from uh, Dan's notes. Okay. That was my only, only source. Mm -hmm. Uh, A a lot of my fellow classmates, they used to attend some classes as well. I did not attend any classes for FMG specifically, but I was only studying through the Dan's notes. Why Mm -hmm. I was doing this is because now when I was preparing for FMG, I had already uh, cons- uh, I had already decided that I'm going to pursue my further studies in UK. Okay, but okay. I I still gave NEET PG exam. Okay, only mm-hmm. because it uh, because of my mom. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the story. Okay, and right. I'm sure uh, and I'm sure most of you who are Indian Indian or Asians, your parents are going to ask you to do that at least once. Like, please give the exam of your country. They would want to do want you to do yes. that. Okay. Yes. So Asian I was not- parents. Exactly. So I was not even going to give that PG exam. I had already booked it just because my mom wanted to. But, you know, on the day of exam, I just, I was just sleeping and my mom came up, came up, she woke me up and like, you go to go and give that exam. Because I had, because I had already cleared my IELTS when that exam happened and I had already booked my PLAB1 exam. So I was not really interested, you know, but anyway, so because I was going to give the exam regardless, I used Mm -hmm. Dan's notes. Okay. And I used the Dan's PG notes, not the FMG notes because Mm -hmm. I had time. I had time during internship. It was not hectic. So I decided to use the Dan's PG notes. Okay. Obviously I did not cover everything because it's very exhaustive. You cannot, cover everything from the dams PG notes. It's very, very vast. Okay. So I focused on the main topics. Okay. Because my seniors guided me like, okay, these are the most common topics which are frequently tested. Do not miss these. So I used to skim through the notes, used to mark and highlight the important topics. Okay. And that's how I used to study. So I did not have any problem with my FMG exam. Uh, I mean, I did not score a. Re- I did not have a really high score, but it was all right, uh, somewhere in one seventy, one eighty. So it was okay. So that was my primary source for FMG. Nothing else. All right, all right. So guys, actually, there are many resources now because uh, he used Dan's note. That doesn't mean that that is the best. Please don't uh, put up questions saying Dan's prep for marrow, please. Uh, this is his way of studying and you can always choose what suits you better. So one question, why UK? Why not any other country, USA, Australia, uh, because they have high paying salary and why, why UK? Well, yes. So this is the biggest debate, you know, like people. So if you compare all the developed nations, if you compare U.S., U.K. So basically the five English speaking nations. OK, U.S., mm-hmm. U.K., New Zealand, Australia and Canada. U.K. is at the lowest among the least, mm-hmm. uh, you know, where the pay scales are the least for doctors. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, this is a big debate. Like, why did you come to decide? Why did you choose U.K.? Now, there are some differences between. So let's compare it with the U.S. OK, U.S. is considered at the topmost. OK, that's the like you would say gold standard for an IMG. All right. So why not U.S.? For me, it was because I wanted to enjoy life as well. OK, I mm-hmm. like medicine, but I like my life. I love my life more than medicine. So I know I have many friends in US. Okay. They are pursuing their training from US. The working hours are terrible. Okay. So they could be working like more than 60, 70 hours a week. In UK, it's very different. In UK, the average working hour, we average working hours for a week is about 48 hours. Okay. Which is, and you get uh, quite a, uh, so I have like at least eight or nine days off in a whole month. So basically I'm working maybe 20 days a month. 
okay so which is uh, which is really which nice which is good so, okay. which is good uh, when it comes to being a doctor yeah it is good so because uk is a you know uk the structure in uk the lifestyle in uk it's it's a socialist country they think about people's well being okay there's no rush to finish everything quickly all right now why people now some most of the people why they don't like coming to uk is because of the lendy training program all right, right. because it, it takes we'll, about we'll 7 years we'll talk about that a little yes, later we'll talk about yes. that a little later so um the major difference as i said the working hours that is one thing okay. second thing second reason why i decided to come to uk because it's next to europe so as i said right. i, en- I enjoy my life so i love traveling so that was my second reason i wanted to explore the whole of whole of europe and that is very easy when you are here in uk okay, okay. you get enough time and it's very cheap to explore any of the other european countries from uk so that was my second reason okay third and reason obviously yeah yes third reason please go ahead third reason obviously uk is uh, the all the uh, post graduate training degrees are recognized in india so if you want to go back to okay. your country it's it's recognized all right so we don't have to give any other licensing exam no no we just come back here with a degree and we can start practicing even in the government uh, hospitals not in the government hospitals okay not in the government hospital so all you need to do okay. is once you have completed your training from uk you mm-hmm. need to go back to your go back to india get registered with your state medical council or maybe even mci okay they will give you your registration because all these degrees they are recognized in india but you won't be able to work in a government setting but i doubt anyone will go back from uk to india to work in a government setting it's i don't think so that's going to happen to be honest okay is this because of the pay scale or any other the reason pay scale and the working environment as well i mean it's it's yeah All there's right. a big disparity and, and why not india why i mean i asked you about the first world countries but why not india because your parents are here and of course india is huge and you can travel here as well and well again coming back to my first reason the working hours because <laughs> you, you must be aware mm-hmm. how how the working hours are for resident doctors like they're working 36 48 hours in a go in one shift i did not right. want to work like that i did not want to be treated like that okay okay is this because the of the competitive um, environment that is here or just the working hours well competition wasn't really an issue for me okay i have always been optimistic all right so i never had an issue with the competition if you work hard okay. you can get get through in india as well there's no doubt there, about that there are a lot of students who feel that once that they have failed neat ug that they won't get a seat in neat pg so this can be a reason for you know thinking having second thoughts about getting into the country our parents of course always want us to come back but then this is a huge reason because seats are very less and competition is more so do you think that uh, like you were as a student till third year like we all are um, uh, regretting about what we have done and how we have failed in the past so does this um, affect our uh, exam like uh, the neat pg exam or do you have any success stories in your uh, college as well who cleared uh, neat pg well i think half of my not half maybe most of my seniors got a good rank in the neat pg exam some of them wow. took two some of them took two years some of them took three okay. years but after okay. that they had really good exam uh, really good uh, rank okay and uh, even even if i talk about my classmates i think there are a few mm-hmm. who have uh, got a really good rank in neat pg yes. and uh, i think the biggest success story was my one of my immediate seniors who had a rank of about 120 in neat pg and he's doing radiology yes. in delhi that's great so for fmg i think there is no barrier we can go to india we can get do our pg over there or we can choose uh, the country of our liking so there's no barrier for an fmg also right yep definitely not i've got okay, examples so... of everyone i've got examples of people <laughs> working in india working in uk like myself working in us who were fmgs wow that is that is so uh, great and you know uh, optimistic for us who are still going through the whole process so we had this question from one of our uh, audience members uh, so 
for plan 2 did you give any stimulation exams or did you practice uh, in any center in india for plan 2 uh not in india for plan 2 i came to uk and i practiced in one of the centers mm-hmm. here in uk i mean uh, the test the test like you have to give the stimulation test right so for that did you prepare in india i mean did you go to any coaching centers who uh, taught you or is so that I, not such yeah. a thing so i went to a coaching center here in uk so because uh, okay. because i gave lab 2 in 2018 and we did not okay. really have uh recognized you know coaching centers in india for plab 2 like they were experimenting a few of the academies from uk they were holding a few sessions in india but i was not really keen on doing that so during my time most of the people what they used to do was they used to give their plab 1 in their home countries and they used to travel to uk to prepare for plab 2 in the uh, mm-hmm. uk itself attend a coaching center here in uk and subsequently give their exam uh, after that Okay okay all right got it so i think we have covered everything while you were in india and now it's time to move forward to uk where you are right now and so many people who want to be so um tell me like first we'll talk about all the terms that uk uh, i mean the nhs system use like fy1 fy2 because we haven't really asked that to anyone so it would be great if you can tell us more about it Uh, all the terms and the structure and then we'll move to your journey okay all right so let's start from the very basic okay mm-hmm. nhs itself what is nhs it's a national health service okay that's the full form so nhs if you compare it with india you can say that all uh, nhs is like a government organization okay it's uh, so most of the hospitals here are run by nhs okay nhs trusts mm-hmm. only about maybe 10% of the hospitals are private okay but if you have to do your training in uk it has to be in an nhs hospital you cannot do your okay. training in a private hospital so that's the basic that's how the healthcare system is in the uk now okay. if we talk about the different grades of uh, staff working in the nhs all right so imagine a medical student like yourself okay who's uh, going to graduate from a uk medical college okay let's say he's graduated he's done with his final year and now he's okay. going to become a doctor so immediately after becoming a doctor after graduating the first post he will get is the post called foundation year 1 which is the fy1 year okay? okay so that is equivalent to an intern in india or uh, maybe somewhere else okay in nepal okay. and ukraine so okay. that's f1 is basically equivalent to an intern all right now in uk the people who have graduated from uk medical college their internship is 2 years so they have to complete f1 year and after that they have to complete the f2 year okay it's okay. like kind of mandatory for them all right okay. so that's the basic that's f1 and f2 all right so these right. are the junior most doctors after graduating now where do we come into play So for right. example I am a guy I have completed my internship somewhere and I am joining and com- joining the NHS. So I as an going, IMG as an IMG okay right. so I I am going to join at the level of FY2 because I have already completed my internship which was equivalent to FY1 so I am going to join okay. at the level of FY2 but because I am not actually an FY2 I am not a proper FY2 trainee I will be called as an SHO which is a senior house officer Okay. 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 So okay. there there are different terms for senior house officer. Uh these days they can most of them they are calling it junior clinical fellow, uh trust grade doctor. So there are many terms, okay? Okay. And okay. So this is where we join at the level of F2 and we will be called as SHO or maybe junior clinical fellow. Okay, these are the fancy terms. All right? Now yeah. uh yeah. i think yeah. i think you got interrupted uh can you repeat uh, yeah so uh, i was mentioning where do we join at what level do we join so yes, we, we join yes 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 i heard that okay yes. so, so so how many uh, posts there were like you said trust grade and and then so these are all the fancy terms for uh, sho okay Right. So it can be SHO, it can be trust grade doctor, it could be junior clinical fellow. These are all fancy terms. It doesn't matter. It's one and the same. Okay. So okay. these are the junior doctors. All right. 
right junior most doctors i would say now okay. <clears throat> after this it depends which training you are going to pursue all right but i will come to the registrar level so because ultimately this uh, you can say the middle grade doctors so these are the junior doctors let's talk mm-hmm. about the middle grade doctors so middle grade okay. doctors are called as registrars in uk okay so and and their their title would be like st3 st4 st5 depending on which year they are in okay but they will be called as the registrars and they are okay. called the middle grade doctors now those doctors similarly like we had f2s and f1s who were in training okay yes. and then we had the non training shos like me we have yes. a similar similar thing with the registrar level uh, doctors as well so st3 st4 st5 these people are in training now if you have a registrar who is not in proper training there is a different term called as sas doctors okay so wow. i'm confused right here <laughs> so you don't need to worry about all of that okay the thing right. is so after f sorry to cut you but after f2 you said that there are middle grade doctors how does an img become a middle grade doctor so after f2 the, you do not become a middle grade doctor directly okay so you go okay. into core training okay so as okay. i mentioned and i think we'll talk about this later on applying for different specialties so i will touch yeah. on this uh, at that time because okay. otherwise it will just create more confusion so let's focus on the junior most doctors which are the f1s okay. and f2s and the right. middle grade doctors the registrars who are who will be st3 st4 st5 depending on what level they are in okay and at the top is your consultant so at the top okay. uh, from any specialty he will be called a, he or she will be called a consultant okay, okay. so right. there is no there is no other title for consultant that's it <laughs> the okay. simplest one is a consultant <laughs> best okay yeah so we have touched about the junior doctors we have touched on the middle grade registrars and we have talked about the consultant post now there are still so these are all doctors apart from doctors there are other people as well so you will see physician associates they are called as pa okay so physician physician associates they are not technically doctors they have their own separate course they attend the uni and they have their own pathway and to become a physician okay. associate so but okay. they will be working alongside you all right okay. so uh and uh, apart from pas you've got ants as well these are called advanced nurse practitioners so these people were nurses at some point and then they have done few more courses they have all attended right. they've right. done some diplomas and then they have uh, got the title of advanced nurse practitioner so okay. these are the basic terms you will see in nhs so apart from all doctors right. there are so many other people but obviously when you come here it will take maybe like a month or so and you will be very used to it okay right 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 i understand so uh, is that all for all the uh, na- naming and the structure of uh, nhs so these are the grades okay now as exactly. mentioned when we talk about different training programs themselves okay right. that's when we can talk more about what actually happens in each of those because every training program is different there is a separate right. pathway and there are separate terms right so are you aware of that or just the radiology part or can you give a brief introduction about uh, the whole pathway to a specialist i mean to consultant can you give a yeah. structure for this okay yes, so i'll please. briefly tell you about all the specialties let's talk about yes. medicine first medicine is the most okay. sought after course okay so let's talk about medicine so for example you are an img who is going to join uk all right so you join at the level of f2 all right so you will be called an sho now for medicine all, all of these will be through plab pathway that you are telling yeah, us about, so i'm right? only talk about yes. talking about the only about plab All right. Yeah so let's focus on the plab pathway for now so uh, yeah. i am i am an img i have given my plab exams i have got registered myself with the gmc and now i'm going i'm i've joined the nhs at the level of f2 okay now the people who are already in f2 they have their own training program so at the end of their f2 they will get their forms and everything signed okay okay so that they can become eligible to apply for a training program like medicine so let's talk about medicine now to become a medicine consultant you need to go through 3 years of internal medicine training so that's imt so that's imt 1 2 and 3 
during okay. these three years, you need to clear all the three steps of MRCP. So that's MRCP part one, part two, and PACES. And once you are done with these three years of internal medicine training, and you have also cleared that, um, also cleared your PACES, all the three steps of MRCP, okay? After that, you become eligible to apply for registrar level post, okay? okay. Now, okay. now, I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to compare it with India, okay? So IMT, IMT, you can say is equivalent to MD medicine in India. Okay, three years, MD medicine is three years in India. IMT is three years again in UK. The difference okay. is once you complete your IMT, you do not become a consultant in UK. Okay. Compare, unlike India, where after completing right. MD, you are a consultant. But after completing IMT, you do not become a consultant. To become a consultant, you have to go into a subspecialty and do that All subspecialty right. training for four years. So let's say cardiology, wow. respiratory, endocrinology, rheumatology. So after completing your IMT, you have to go into four years of subspecialty training, after which you become a consultant. So if we take the total duration, it's about seven to eight years. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the thing is, it looks lengthy, it looks long, but actually it's mm -hmm. not. So as I said, if you complete your MD medicine in India for three years, Right. If you want to become a cardiologist, what are you going to do? You're going to apply for a DM cardiology post. Yes, right. Which right. is which is going to be three years again. So even if it, even in India, it's going to be six years. So the only difference is you don't work as a consultant after completing IMT. You have to complete the whole pathway to become a consultant. But once you are a consultant, you will be a consultant in cardiology, respiratory. You will be a consultant in rheumatology, depending on what you have done. Okay. So this was the brief okay. structure of medicine. It's quite All similar right. for and other specialties. What about the pay, pay scale? I mean, are you earning at that point of time when you are doing IMT? You will be earning throughout. So once you start working in NHS, you will be earning always. There won't be any point where you are not earning. Okay. And how good is the pay scale while uh, you are at F, F2 level? And uh, after that, like if you are in a subspeciality, then how good is the pay scale? So your pay scale will keep on increasing once. So at the level of F2, it's the basic, the minimal salary. It is good enough. Mm -hmm. Again, it is good enough for a person. It's good enough for one person. It's good enough even for a family. Obviously, if you're not partying too much, if, you, okay. if, you're, if you're single, it's good enough even to explore okay. all the European countries. As you go higher up, once you become, once you get into IMT, as you go higher up each year, mm -hmm. your pay is going to increase. All right. Okay. Uh, and if you want, uh, I mean, if you want the exact quote, I can give you that as well. But it's up to you. <laughs> no, no, sure. Of course, you can go ahead. This is uh, because not I think, yeah, very uh, I mean, many people are asking about that. So I can tell you the yes, basic, sure. the, ba the very basic yes. salary. So if you are an F2, if you're working at the level of F2, okay, you can expect your salary to be about 26 to 26, uh, 2700 pounds per month. Com compare, uh, yeah, convert it to Indian rupees around 2.5 lakhs per month. Okay. Okay. Your living cost, uh, in so your living cost, including your rent, uh, groceries, everything, maximum it will come down to 1200 pounds if you spend spend a lot. Okay. So you okay. still okay. still you okay. save still you save quite a good amount of money. So this is just oh, yeah. the F2 level post. Okay. F2 Obviously level your, post. Oh, your yeah. salary is going to be higher when you are in training like IMT or mm -hmm. as a registrar. Right. So now that you are telling about all these uh, speciality, before that, I really want to ask you, are there these many places for IMGs to come and uh, do their subspeciality? I mean, is that is called PG, right? That yeah. is PG. So yeah. is there any space like, I mean, just like in India, we don't have that much seats. So are there seats for this? What is the reality? So so, okay, so if I talk about when I came, there were a lot mm -hmm. of places, but because UK has opened its doors to everyone, they want doctors to come to their country, okay? So what has happened is in the last two years, obviously the competition ratios, uh, the competition ratio has gone up because so many people are coming now. Uh, if you are following the PLAB, pages on Facebook, you might have seen people are not getting a, a place to even sit for. They are not getting the booking slot for PLAB 1 or PLAB 2. It's becoming right. uh, that uh, difficult now. But if we still 
uh, talk about today. Let's talk about today. Still, it is right. possible depending on what specialty you want to go to. Okay. So, for example, uh, you know, if you want to apply for internal medicine training, you still have a good number of places, like twenty, uh, some something about twenty-seven, uh, seventeen hundred places. Okay. If you want to apply for psychiatry, if you want to apply for pediatrics, okay. so there are some specialties. which have more number of posts and less number of candidates okay. less as in not okay. less than the number of posts but it's not that competitive some specialties they are very competitive if you talk about surgical specialties they are always very competitive okay like ophthalmology general surgery and all the surgical specialties so it really depends what you want to do but it's not impossible to get into any one of those you just need to have okay. the right right things on your cv to get into any training post okay okay and the cv will be built in uh, uk itself like you mentioned in uh, the earlier you can start building your cv anywhere wherever you are you can start building in india you can start building it in ukraine you just need to go to the page like for example you want to become a surgeon go to the right. specialty training website see what points are scored for different things start working on it okay. and it's straight forward all right so about cv we'll talk a little later otherwise we'll lose the form and so the next speciality uh, surgery because a lot of people want to know about surgery okay if you right. have a little bit yes yeah so let's talk about surgery so again the training pro- structure is quite similar to medicine the only difference being so after completing your f2 so let's talk okay. as an img uh, let's talk as an img so after completing your f2 level post okay once you become eligible you can apply to core surgical training so core surgical training is 2 years you will be called as cst1 cst2 so that's your core mm-hmm. training okay after your course, so during these 2 years you need to clear all the three steps of mrcs okay so for ex- okay. for Same. so medicine had mrcp for surgery yeah. you have mrcs okay right. so you need to clear all the steps of mrcs to become eligible to apply for sub specialty training so it's quite right. similar after completing your core training you will be applying for st3 plus level posts which will be mm-hmm. in which will be in all those different surgical specialties so for example vascular surgery ent urology all the different sub specialties just like medicine so the basic structure is 2 years of core training and then 5 to 6 years of sub specialty training depending on whichever specialty you're going into Right. All right. so if we if we are choosing a different specialty does the pay scale also depend on on this or the pay scale is almost similar to all of the sub specialties or consultant level so pay scales are the basic pay scale is going to be the same on so what we have in uk is something called as banding okay let me explain to uh, let me explain that because that will make things easier so you have something right. called as banding so for example your basic pay your basic pay as an sho it's going to be around 2000 pounds okay that is okay. that those 2000 pounds are for a 9 to 5 job you're not doing any right. nights you're not doing any weekends so if you're just working right. nine, if you're just doing a 9 to 5 job no weekends no nights you get 2000 pounds if you're working nights and weekends you will get at least 40 to 50% more of this salary so that's right. why that's why your salary comes to around 27 2800 okay after okay. tax this is all after tax so it depends on which specialty you are so for example i am going into radiology okay from august so okay. my so my pay is going to be less because in my first year in radiology i'm not going to do any nights or any weekends so i will be only getting a basic pay no supplements okay. so my you are not allowed to... or you are not I... allowed or You are you don't allowed to do extra shifts. You are allowed to do extra shifts wherever you want. But if we okay. talk just about the training itself, you will only get the basic pay, okay? Because you're right. not doing any nights or any weekends, okay? Right. So if you are in a surgical specialty, you will be doing loads of nights. You will be doing working hectic hours. So your pay will also automatically increase. So that depends on how many hours you are working on. Okay okay so we talked about i think we completed surgery right it it also takes around 7 to 8 years uh, yeah. for us. and is uh, radiology a separate sub specialty or is it included in surgery itself so radiology is separate okay so okay. Ra- radiology training is 5 years st1 to st5 it's 6 years if you're doing going to do interventional radiology okay 
so uh, let's start from the beginning from so, i mean we are talking about your journey now so radiology explain okay, so, us everything right okay so i joined at the level of f2 coming back to the scratch okay so i joined at yeah. the level of f2 okay yeah. i got got my competency signed competency is basically means you are as competent as a uk f2 okay so okay. once you work for four or five months in the nhs most of your consultants right. they would be happy to sign that form you need that okay. form you need that form to become eligible to apply for further training program okay right. to to become eligible for imt to become eligible for core training or to become okay. eligible for radiology now right. the good thing about the good thing about radiology training is you can start directly after completing your f2 level post okay you okay. don't need wow. to go you don't need to go into a core training program like medicine or surgery so you start straight away as an st1 okay specialty okay, trainee wow. one in radiology and so you don't go through the imt i mean uh, no. whatever is for specifically for uh, radiology there's nothing so, specific for radiology no okay. no so you start from st1 in radiology and you just keep on going through the years and you once you are mm -hmm. done once you reach st5 you become a radiologist and as i mentioned if you're doing interventional radiology is 6 years so right. there is so the thing the difference is so as i mentioned if we were pursuing medicine you have to complete imt which is uh, uh 3 years after that mm -hmm. you have to you have to sit for interviews again okay oh all right okay to apply for st4 level post S the registrar level post st okay. st4 or st1 st4 so because you already done 3 years in imt all right okay when you become a registrar it will be st4 okay okay all right so in radiology once you are in radiology that's it you will become a consultant after finishing it there is no uh, other pathway so you start at st1 you go to okay. st2 3 4 5 and that's it you are a consultant wow so that's this the basic sounds difference. easy this sounds easy but uh, what about the competition is it easier so, to become a radiologist in uk or in india what do you think because it sounds so easy and it sounds so good it is very competitive okay right and uh, obviously for obvious reasons because um, so uh, if i talk about the competition ratios for for this year so we have it's still not competitive as competitive as india okay because okay. You, we are talk we are talking about uk the population of uk is nothing compared to india okay right. but still there were about 1700 candidates who applied for radiology this year and about 350 people there were about 350 posts for radiology okay, okay. so wow. you can say one in three chance there is one in three chance to get into radiology compared which is still better which is still better compared to india definitely right. okay but obviously you have to remember that the people whom you are competing against they are also very qualified okay we are not talking about any random guy okay these or most of these people they are already working in uk they have given interviews they have got a portfolio they have a good experience as well so it's not going to be easy competing against 1700 other people okay it's right. always going to be tough all right? right but yes if we talk about competition ratios radiology you can say is among the 10 most competitive specialties in uk okay, right. okay. not everywhere, the most competitive everywhere i believe everywhere exactly. i believe yes yes all right so yes yeah. you can go ahead with your a whole journey uh, from f2 and then s uh, by 1 st1 right so i will be st1 from august okay 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 now uh, so let's uh, so again yeah so coming back to my journey so i joined yes. at the level of f2 in 2019 okay, okay. in january 2019 and i so this was my second attempt at radiology i had applied for radiology last year as well so my first okay. attempt at radiology was in 2020 okay, okay. i i did not uh, get into radiology last year so that was my first okay. attempt so what okay. i did what i did was i was going to apply for radiology again this year okay but i had to keep a backup plan because i was not sure if i was, if i will get into radiology this year as well right right so right you always important. you always need to have a backup plan so mm. i took up a different training program which is the gp training program okay, okay. now i'll talk about that uh, just in a moment so i took up a tr uh, training post which is called a gp training okay 
uh, in 2020. And I kept on working towards my radiology application throughout 2020, applied again this year. And this time I was successful. So I'm going to start my training in August this year as a radiology training. Okay, and I will be okay. quitting my current post. All right. And what did you do for your CV? And then we can talk about the uh, training program that you did. Like, is it necessary? Uh, and I, I mean, you would know better. So... So the CV depends on which specialty you're applying for. Okay. It's very different. for okay. uh, So, so for example, if you're applying for medicine, if you're applying for surgery, they have a set of requirements and it's very straightforward. You just need to go on their website. They have listed everything that, okay. Okay. For, for example, can you for mention this, the website? Can you mention the website? So yes, definitely. So if you're applying for IMT, go to IMT training. It's a Google search. Okay. You can search everything on Google. Go to IMT. Right. So for whatever training you want to apply for, just go to Google, type your specialty, and just write recruitment. Recruitment in, uh, in the end. Okay. So for example, okay. if you want to apply for IMT, search on Google IMT recruitment. And the first website okay. will be your main site. If you want to apply for radiology, go into radiology right. recruit. Go search. Okay. Go and search radiology recruitment at Google. So it will lead you to Great. the uh, radiology website. Right. Uh, is building a CV easy when it comes to being in India or being in UK? Like, are the requirements, I mean, uh, like, can you fulfill it in India or is it specific just in the UK? I think most of the things which I have done could have been done in India as well. Okay. So okay. Okay. some things which are very common to almost all specialties is uh, audit. Okay. You need audit projects. You can do audit projects anywhere in the world. Okay. Doesn't necessarily have to be in UK. All right. Yeah. You can get your publications. So publications are another thing on your CV. So you can get a publication even now when you are in Ukraine, when you are in any corner of the world, uh, right. you could, you could do teaching sessions. Okay. So for example, once you become, uh, once you complete your final year, you can do some teaching sessions for final year students. So again, okay. that can be done anywhere in the world. All right. So some things which are very generic, the audits, publications, teaching sessions can be done anywhere in the world. OK, you right. don't have to be in UK for that. Right. All right. But like you said, you did not do anything in India and in your college to I mean, to build your CV. So I think that did not harm your way to becoming a radiologist. No. So it is possible without that also. Yeah, absolutely. I took just four months to prepare my portfolio for the radiology application that I'm talking about last right. year, my first right. attempt, I, and I had a really good portfolio score last year as well. So and all it took was four months. That's it. Okay, so about the CV we have talked about now, uh, the the training that you did in between the uh, which medical training, right? The GP training, yes the GP training. So can you tell us more about it? And is it like, uh, does any everyone have to do this? Or just if you don't like if you don't get it in the first place, then only this is required? Well, so GP training is separate program. Okay, it's a completely different training program. Okay, so okay. Uh, I'll have to explain the UK healthcare system again. So we talked okay. about uh, coming back to the basics. So we talked about the NHS hospitals. Okay. Right. So 90% of hospitals are NHS hospitals. You have 10% private hospitals. Now what happens in UK, for example, if you've got a mild uh, flu or if you've got some tonsillitis, something which is not, uh, which is not an emergency. Mm -hmm. So you won't, you don't go to the hospital for that. You go to right. someone called as your GP. Okay. Right. So GP is called as a general practitioner. So anyone who right. lives in anyone who lives in UK has to get himself registered with the general practitioner. So they have like their own clinics. Okay. They call it as GP surgeries. All right. So they are called general practitioners. So anyone living in UK has to get registered with a GP. So for example, if you have any problem, which is non-urgent, okay, not requiring mm -hmm. you to go to hospital, you book your clinic appointment with the GP. All right. Okay. So they have their own clinic and they will decide whether you need to go to the hospital or not. Okay? All right. All right. All right. And so, how did you get the job? I mean, uh, you were preparing for radiology. So uh, side by side, uh, did you also apply for GP? 
So the thing is, the, so when you are applying for radiology or you are applying for GP, you have to give an exam called as the SRA exam, MSRA exam. That's the full form, the okay. Multi Specialty Recruitment Assessment. So okay. it's an exam which you need to appear for before going okay. any further. So if you are applying for radiology, you need to appear in this exam. And what happens okay. is, so for example, seventeen hundred people applied for this uh, for radiology. Yeah. All of them will have to give this exam. and okay. they will call okay. they will call the top 600 people from this exam to the interview so it's okay. like a it's like an eligibility exam okay you need to have a cut off score in this exam to make it to the interview now this okay. same exam the same exam is used by the gp training uh, people okay so once you give this exam you will be given rank and depending on your rank you will get mm-hmm. into gp training Okay. Okay. So this exam is becoming increasingly common now. So it, this okay. exam is used for psychiatry. This exam is used for ops and gynae. It's used for ophthalmology. Oh, so okay. many specialties are using this exam just as a cut off. So, okay. Wow. Traditionally, oh, right. traditionally, traditionally, this exam was only for GP training. So you give this exam, you get a rank, and depending on your rank, you get into GP training. Okay, so because and when is it? When is it? Like when do you give this exam? So this after F two? Yeah, after F two. You are eligible after F two. After completing your F two level post. Okay, so because the exam for radiology and GP was same, I took GP as a backup. Okay, because I did not get into radiology, and right. not just because uh, I. just just for the sake of it because right. if i had not got into radiology this is what i would have continued later on in the future okay okay all right i i got it understood so if uh, you did not get it in the first place in uh, uh, for radiology how many attempts uh, uh, are like given there's no limit to attempts attempt? there's no limit to uh, how many attempts you can uh, you can okay, give take. unlimited attempts okay you can take 4 years you can take 5 years okay okay uh, and uh, uh, is uk somebody asked uh, is uk pg uh, training like is this free of cost or are there scholarships available uh, what is or do we have to pay from our own self so as i mentioned from the day you start working in the uk you're not going to spend a single penny on your training post okay the oh, only wow. thing you're That going to sp- the only thing you're going to spend on is your exams so for example if you're giving mrcp for medicine mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. have to pay for the exam but mm-hmm. you are paid for everything else okay so uh, to simplify it let's talk about someone doing post graduation in india in a medical in a government medical college right so they they get a stipend right 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 okay so that you can that stipe- stipend is like nothing i know i know i know that's why right. but <laughs> yeah you can uh, so i'm not saying it's equivalent to that i'm not comparing the actual figure but i'm calling right. it like a stipend okay so that's what it is so you won't pay for anything okay you are paid for everything so throughout your training you will be paid for everything so if you're whatever specialty you are doing it doesn't matter Okay. you will be paid mm-hmm. okay because you are a doctor because you are working in the hospital so there is nothing as such called as you know like like something like in india like you give this much money and you become you get a post graduate degree it doesn't happen in okay. uk okay 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 so this is not about money but this is about the years that you given right yeah so that's that's the biggest problem why people don't like coming to uk because uh when i tell my juniors okay like right. when i came here obviously many of them they were keen in coming to uk so i told them right. keep 8 years in your hand okay you have to keep 8 years in your hand if you want to become a physician surgeon even if you want to become a radiologist i have already spent 2 years in uk and i'm going to start my radiology this year so 5 years right. from now 5 years down the lane it will be 7 years complete Pretty okay right but but if you compare with india first of all there is the uncertainty of when you're going to clear the neat pg exam are you going to clear it in your first attempt no no one can say that that you're going to right. get a good rank okay. in the first attempt maybe let's say you got it in the second attempt okay all right mm-hmm. so that's your second year and then you get into a program in residency in india that's for 3 years but after those 3 years you become md medicine md so ms surgeon but as right. i mentioned before even after that you go into dm or mch DM, yes. which is going to be 3 years again so even in india you're going to spend 6 7 years at least 
Right. So somebody asked, what is the difference between uh, GP training, uh, core and speciality training? Is GP training the same as speciality training? So GP training is going, so the difference is GP training is going to lead you to become a GP, a general practitioner. Speciality training is going to lead you to become a consultant. Okay. So if you're becoming, okay. if you're doing specialty training, so if you're doing medicine, you're going to become a physician, a consultant physician. If you're doing mm -hmm. surgery, you're going to become a consultant surgeon. If you're doing GP, you're going to become a general practitioner. Okay. You won't be a consultant, okay. but you will be a general okay. practitioner who will be working in a general practice clinic in a, they call it as okay. just like an MBBS here. doctor, just like an MBBS doctor so, in India compared. Well, not exactly. The thing is, okay. yes, GP training is not actually recognized in India because we don't have the system in India. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Because we don't have a concept of GP in India. Okay. Because it's a like it's a recognized route here in UK, in Australia, and in Canada because their healthcare system is uh, quite similar. Right. So okay. you have got GPs in Australia, you have got GPs in Canada as well because there are specific GP surgeries outside hospital who deal with right. all these problems, okay? Now, why, I'm, uh, why this is important is why they are not actually equivalent to MBBS because the pay scale of a GP is mm -hmm. almost, almost similar to a hospital consultant, okay? Oh, so okay. He's, okay. Wow. He's, no, he's nowhere near uh, MBBS uh, graduate. So if uh, somebody has done GP training and if they come back to India, uh, for further whatever their reason may be, uh, what do they have to do? Like, uh, do they have to give any other other exam or do they have to sit for college? So, How is it? So as I said, GP training is the only training pathway from UK, which is not recognized in India. So that was my main concern why I okay. deci decided to be a hospital consultant rather than a GP. Because right. as a GP, you cannot come back to India. There's nothing much you can do. Okay. okay wow. Because Thank we don't you for have this insight. G we don't have GPs in India. There are other things which you could do. Okay. So like most of the GPs over here in UK, they specialize, they do some diploma courses and they run their own clinics. Like they do some diploma in dermatology and they are running their own dermatology clinics as well. Right. So there are loads of other things which you could do as a GP. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's All right. Great. Many, many of the GPs, they are doing aesthetics. They are doing Botox, lip fillers, all these things. So okay. it's, a, it's okay. a very successful business here in UK. And this is something. Yeah. So if you, unfortunately, if you decide to go back to India, this is something you could continue in India. Okay. Oh, but all right, you all can't, right. but you can't practice as a consultant because you're not a consultant. Okay. I, I, I understood. Uh, should we take some questions from the yeah. audience? Right. Yeah. So a lot of people want to ask about UK MLA. What is your opinion on this? So UK MLA is, uh, I think what the GMC website says is they're going to introduce this in 2024. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I have been reading on the website, it sounds similar to the PLAB exams. So right. they've got two parts in the UK MLA. Okay. So first part is called as the applied knowledge test, which is going right. to be a theory exam. The second part is going to be a practical test. So I don't, okay. I don't see any big Much difference from things. PLAB. So you've got PLAB one, which is a theory test and you've got PLAB two, which is a practical exam. So the only thing they are actually doing is changing the term. It just sounds fancy. Right. You know, okay. like you hear about USMLE, you're talking about UK, UK, UK MLA. So it just sounds fancy. I don't see any difference between okay. uh, PLAB and UK MLA. The concept is going to be the same. You've still got two parts. Okay. You're, you're not going to give any more extra steps. Okay. So I don't see mm -hmm. any reason to be concerned about UK MLA. It's going to be similar. Okay. Uh, let's talk about money because yeah. that's one thing that a lot of people don't quote. How yeah. much uh, do you, how much do we have to spend before coming to UK and how much do you earn after, for example, your post radiology? Okay. So let's talk about, uh, let's start from the scratch. Okay. The day you decide to come to UK and okay. the day you, day you become a doctor, the day you receive mm -hmm. your first pay. So right. I, I have decided I want to come to UK, whatever I got to do. The first thing I need to think of the exams I need to give. So I mm -hmm. need to appear for either the IELTS or OET. Okay. I have to appear for PLAB 1. I have to appear for PLAB 2. So right. if you talk about these, so 
the exams itself will cost you about 1.2 to 1.3 lakh okay in indian right. rupees all right? right what are the other things which are going to cost you more so your gmc registration once you are done with the exams your gmc registration around 30 to 40000 okay so okay. your plane tickets your accommodation in uk right um this is especially for my dad he's listening from the side so <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely so i'm going to give you the exact figure okay <laughs> so we have come to 1.6 lakh till now okay exam and gmc fees done if you include uh, the flight tickets the return tickets if you talk about accommodation uh, when you come here in uk to practice and give you a plat to exam accommodation flight tickets food party everything yeah. you come yes. to uk for yeah. the first time yeah so you you're looking at about 5 lakhs okay wow. a rough estimate a rough estimate 5 lakhs okay mm -hmm. until the day you earn okay right. because so this is this... around total in 7 lakhs if we include the um, exams and then living cost in uk so 7 lakhs i would say 7 lakhs would be the maximum 7 lakhs would be including your work visa okay it would okay, be including okay. your work visa as well it yeah. won't go till 7 lakh like, i don't think so unless you decide to give your exam in london and you decide right. to come and practice in london because right. L london is going to be expensive if you're coming to manchester you can reduce okay. maybe maybe 1 lakh so okay. 7 lakhs is like at uh, maximum right so uh, so that is the whole amount that we will be spending before coming to uk and after that how much uh did you tell me about your pay scale when you were talking about your pathway so i joined uh, so <clears throat> at my level so at, uh, so basically at the level of an f2 you you could expect 27 to 2800 pounds a month if you are mm -hmm. doing night if you're doing nights and if you're working weekends okay, okay. if you are if you're only doing a 9 to 5 job without right. any nights or without any weekends you will only get right. around 22 2000 something like that and okay. what about down the years <clears throat> and down the years obviously so it again depends which training you're going into if you're going into a training which has nights and weekend work uh, weekend work then you will be getting more we are eager to know about your training radiology how much uh... if you're going into radiology it's going to come down because you don't have nights in the first year you're not doing any nights mm. in the first year yeah i mean down the uh, lane down the years So obviously, so if I'm if I go down my radiology route, okay. So once yeah. I become once I reach third year, I right. would be earning I would be earning over three thousand, okay, okay, which I'm earning right now at the moment. Uh, so, how? Because I am working in a medicine department right now. Right now also. And, All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm doing weekends. That's why my pay okay. is high, okay. Okay. But because okay. because I'm going into radiology, my pay is going to be yeah. less. because okay. the working hours are flexible now this is something you don't need to worry about okay even okay. if you're working in a specialty where you're not doing weekends or you're not right. doing nights so let's mm -hmm. say you are doing a 9 to 5 job you've got 8 days off in a week uh, in a month sorry okay right so uh, it's not like india you get the whole weekend off so you've got your saturday sunday both of them are off so you get 8 okay. 8 days off in a month So right. during those eight days, you could do take up extra shifts. Okay, we call them as locums. So you could do extra shifts. Okay, so for example, if you work one Saturday, all right, you right. would roughly you would roughly be getting four hundred fifty pounds after tax wow. for a wow. for a twelve twelve hour shift. Okay, that's that's good. So you could always supplement your income regardless of what your what your basic pay is. Okay, so so income is, is not an issue. Pay is never going to be an issue in UK. Yes, it's going to be less compared to US, but because US has awkward working hours, they are working like sixty, seventy hours a, uh, uh, <clears throat> in a week. So you right, you will right, you right. will never be asked to work like this uh, in NHS. Okay, you okay. can. So if you start working sixty, seventy hours a week in UK, then right. you will be earning the same amount of money you're which you're going to earn in US. So it's not going to be any different. Okay. and uh, we have uh, one more question which is a very common question where is it yeah. yeah uh so can we do gmc registration through plat pathway without clearing fmg exam 
So absolutely, you can do it. The thing is, now this is a very tricky situation. What happens is, right. so let's let's talk about myself. What if I did not give my FMG? What if I decided to come to UK directly? Um, I could have got GNC registration without giving the FMG. Okay. The thing is, because the GNC registration, if you read the eligibility criteria for GNC registration, what they want is, first of all, your medical college should be recognized in their list. Second thing is they want your internship to be valid. What is a valid internship? Your internship must have included three months of surgery or and three months of medicine. So for example, uh, if you talk about you, you're doing your medicine in Ukraine. If you, yeah. if you have an internship program which covers three months medicine and three months surgery, that right. tick boxes the GMC criteria, yeah. all right? And the, and the last thing, the third and the most important thing where people get stuck is that they want right. a certificate of good standing, okay? The certificate of good standing okay. is a certificate issued by the medical council from where you are okay. registered, okay? Okay. So <clears throat> I was registered, so when I did my internship in Nepal, so as I mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning, that the internship in Nepal was valid in India, okay? Right. So I did not have to do anything else. Now, right. the thing is, because when I did my internship in Nepal, I had received a provisional certificate from the Nepal Medical Council just okay. for that one year of internship, all right? Right, right. And when I gave my FMG exam, after that, I got registered with the Delhi Medical Council. So when I mm -hmm. applied for GMC registration, they asked right. me for a certificate of good standing from the Delhi Medical Council, which was easy to get because I was registered there, and okay. Nepal Medical Council as well, which is where I had a little bit of difficulty because I only had a provisional registration from Nepal, okay? Okay. And they don't issue any certificate of good standing for people who do not have a permanent registration. Right. So, now the, so that's the only problem. If you're applying to GMC directly without uh, FMG, that means mm -hmm. you won't you won't be registered to any other medical council, okay? Right. So, because you will be coming from a country where mm -hmm. you are uh, doing your internship, but it will obviously yes. be for one year, and that's it. After you're done with that, your registration would be cancelled. And okay. when you come back, right. when you come back, when you come back to India, you're not registered with any of the Indian medical council because you've not given your FMG. The GMC doesn't okay. mind that. The GMC doesn't care even if you're not registered with any medical council while you're applying. They don't care. Yes. Okay. They will ask you for a certificate of good standing from any medical council you have been registered with. Okay. Right. So if you want to come to UK and you decide, I'm, I don't want to give FMG, I want to come directly to UK. So supposing you go into the Ukrainian internship, okay? You will have to get a letter from the Ukrainian uh, college, your college or medical council, something yeah. like a no objection certificate. So a, a certificate of good standing is basically like a no objection certificate, okay? So mm -hmm. you just need to get that certificate made from the Ukrainian medical council and you can apply for mm -hmm. GMC registration. There's no uh, need of giving, giving an FMG yeah. and getting registered with an Indian medical council. Okay. But say, for example, we have been in UK for quite a long time and now we have reached a consultant level. Would that not make us eligible to come back to India and practice? I mean, will they still care about you being uh, registered? I mean, not registered. I mean, in a way, like if you have given FMG or not. So once you return to India as a consultant... You will be up right. so if, if so for example I have got a, G, a DMC Delhi Medical Council's registration at the moment. Now when I return to India, if I return to India right. with a, after becoming a consultant here, I will still have to apply for a registration because this registration, my current registration is uh, is a registration as an MBBS. Okay, so right. my title on the Delhi Medical Council certificate is MBBS. It's not anything else. Right. So when I right. come back to India as a consultant, I will have to re-register and I will, my title will be FRCR. So FRCR is the, uh, is the <clears throat> exam for radiology, okay? okay. Which, is the, so, which is the recognized degree as a radiologist from UK in India, okay? Okay, okay. So, okay. I'll so have we to have to give that exam. Re-register as in, do we have to give any exam? No, 
you don't have to give any other exam because if you go to the indian medical act and the medical council of india's website they have mentioned yes. several several degrees mrcp mrcs frcr these are all listed there as recognized okay. qualifications okay? okay so once you come back all you need to do right. is go to go to your local state council or go to mci mm-hmm. and you just tell them this is what your degree is and you show okay. them the certificate and you just apply for registration there's no need for an exam so we don't have to give fm so if we come without giving fmg this is another option that once uh, we have given so many uh, years in uk or any other country then we can come back with a valid consultant degree and not give fmg i mean yeah. uh, so yeah. fmg is out of question so fmg is only for now okay so why are you giving fmg is because once you have bec- once you have completed mbbs you want to right. come back to india and you want to want to work as a mbbs okay not anything more so fmg I, is only for that no i mean to say that uh, if we come back to india and we haven't registered before going to uk so that is not an issue we can always no. do it later so why yeah. do people give fmg first and then they go to uk so uh so for example uh, i'll t- uh, i'll answer your question in a moment okay <clears throat> yeah. just to focus on the first point that why do uh like okay so my registration with delhi medical council is going to expire next year okay after that okay. it will be it will be done so i won't be registered in india after 2022 okay. but even if i go back after becoming a consultant so without uh that so there will be at least a period of 4 years where i was not registered with any indian medical council but okay. still if i go back i have got a degree which is considered as a recognized qualification in the uh, indian medical act so they have to give me a registration okay doesn't matter if i was not recognized before if i was not registered before so okay. it it doesn't matter if you're not registered now okay now why do people give fmg just like me right. why did right. okay so why did i give fmg even though i wanted right. to go to uk i could have gone there straight away without giving fmg the only reason i gave it because first thing your mom okay that's the first reason your parents <laughs> right second reason right second reason you don't know how much time it is going to take to get yourself registered with gmc and how much time you're going to uh, take to get a job in uk okay it can take from one month to maybe one year to maybe two years okay, okay. it took me it took me about 6 to 7 months to get myself gmc registered and get a job in uk okay. so what okay. are you going to do in those 6 7 months if you've got if you have registered with the indian medical council you can right. work you can utilize that time to work in an indian hospital okay rather than sitting at okay. home so that's the only right. reason that's the main reason because you don't okay. know how much time you're going to take okay so that's always a good idea to give this exam get yourself registered and while you're waiting for all the stuff to happen you start working mm-hmm. okay that's the only reason that's the main reason i would right. say <clears throat> right 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 now now i get it so uh, it's good that we i mean it should be like this we should give fmg exam but it won't be a problem if we come back and if we haven't given this exam we'll still be re-registered so that's yeah. that's a good thing right so yeah. as we all know about the uk resources and i think ashu kapoor also told us about the oxford book which is a great source for preparation is there any other source that we have to prepare from for uh, radiology or like other specialties or is it just the basic oxford so for radiology you don't need to do anything okay uh, because mm-hmm. radiology is a very separate specialty you don't need okay. to study anything about radiology until you get into radiology training itself okay right. for anything else for anything else you the as uh, ashutosh kapoor mentioned there okay the best thing would be to um, do the oxford handbook okay that's the best okay. source all right okay. because and uh, the other one so i think there are different oxford handbooks so depending right. on which job you have taken so for example if you're okay. going if, if you're going to work in emergency medicine as your first job in the uk so you can study right. the Ox- oxford handbook of emergency medicine if you're going okay. into pedi- pediatrics then you can use the oxford handbook for that specialty okay right so the gold standard gold standard is always going to be your oxford handbook okay and what were your resources for preparing for plat 1 
and then flab 2 and then for uh, s your radiology uh, training so for flab 1 during my time it's been a long time during my time we used to have a question bank called as flabable okay? okay that was my primary source for flab 1 exam and during my time i will be very honest flab 1 was relatively much easier compared to what it is now okay right so uh, it was a very easy exam flab 1 during right. my time so all i needed was one question bank more than 50% of questions were repeated from that question bank nowadays nowadays uh, from the stories i've been hearing is people need to do at least two question banks to get a mm-hmm. pass a, a good score in the flab 1 exam so if okay. you uh i think one of them is uh, so med revision you've got past medicine you've got mcq bank so these yeah. are all the different options do two of them my approach would be okay. do two question banks but okay. always always do plabable okay so plabable yeah. is like a recall of the actual plab exam so most of their questions have been already tested in the plab exam so you need yeah. to absolutely do plabable all the other resources are for any unexpected questions you might see on your exam and to okay. improve your knowledge as well so do two question banks for plab 1 okay? okay coming to plab 2 okay. coming to plab 2 for plab 2 it is ideal that you attend uh, at least one uh, that you attend a coaching academy okay so you've okay. got a uh, different coaching academy you've got swami's yeah. you've got samson you've got uh, aspire there are loads of different academy okay these are the main four ones Okay. All right. So the ideal way would be to book your club to come to okay. UK and okay. uh, come to UK three months, uh, two months before your exam. Attend okay. the coach, coaching academy. So the coaching will last for fifteen days, twelve to fifteen days. After okay. that, you will be practicing with your colleagues and using all the mannequins to practice for about maybe one and a half or two months, and then you will appear for your okay. exam. Okay. Okay. Some people, some people, they have cleared the exam by just studying online with different colleagues without attending any coaching. But I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. If you want okay. to, if you want to, uh, because the thing is, it's a very risky. People have done it. Okay, but it's risky okay. because you want to okay. know how the lab two structure is, how the exam is, and you want to get the feel of it. so it is ideal right. you attend any of these coaching center i'm not going to recommend any one of them because all of them are same all of them have the same passing rate no matter what they claim on their website doesn't matter okay, okay? all right i mean i have attended swami at my time and i attended swami okay. because most of my friends were going to swami that was my only reason all right okay but i'm i'm not going to say that you should attend swami no absolutely not just okay. go wherever your friends are going okay doesn't matter all have the same passing right. rate so that was and my after- resource of lab 2 right and after that you gave an exam which you said mrsa so for that yes. which right so for the msra i have i have used MSRA, i have done sorry. three question banks okay so my primary source was past medicine okay past medicine was my uh, main question bank for the msra exam and okay. apart from that uh the last year i did e medica this year i did mcq bank okay now the thing with e medica and mcq bank is they are very okay. similar to the actual exam but they are very okay. short they are very short they don't cover many topics they cover the most frequently tested topics so right. again my approach was two question banks one which mm-hmm. is exhaustive one which covers all the questions and the other one which is more like an exam but i used oh. that question bank when the exam was nearer okay so maybe like 3 or 4 months before the exam okay okay great and uh, anything that you were doing on the side uh, in terms of theory part any book that you would recommend well uh, in uk we don't really do much books okay we are just more doing question banks but uh, okay if you if you want to do a book oxford handbook is going to be a gold all, okay all that's right, a gold standard all. for anything all right and uh, then after that you gave the subspeciality exam i believe i mean radiology for no SC. so no 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 i haven't given anything okay so okay. if you're going into radiology okay so for yes. radiology all your exams are going to be when you are in radiology training so i am going to give okay. all my frcr exams when i am already doing my radiology i don't give anything before that okay so how did you uh, end up in a radiology training so um initially when i came to uk my main choices were either i'm going to do medicine or i'm going to do mm-hmm. gp i was not right. uh, i mean 
if you ask any medical student very few yeah. of them will tell you that i want to do radiology because we are not really exposed <laughs> right. we are not really exposed to radiology in our medical school so right. uh, plus it actually, is very difficult plus it is very difficult for an img to get into these uh, specialties because of their competitive nature i believe and well, we don't even I've think been... about going into it for even you uh, even if you give usmds the one thing that you are sure of getting is a uh, internal medicine training that's all well i feel if you are interested in any specialty it would be easy it won't be difficult for you to get into it okay right if you are if you're doing something which is uh, your interest i don't think so it's going to be difficult okay so <clears throat> uh we, you have seen my story i mean i have i'm not like a very bright student never been a topper i am like i've been an fmg i couldn't after two years i applied for uh two years in india i couldn't get a seat i had to go out to do my medical studies failed several exams still i'm here doesn't matter and still i'm the same it's not like i suddenly i picked up my books and started studying 12 hours a day no never happened i've right. always studied at my pace i've always studied the fixed amount of time which i have always given throughout my med school right. so but i was interested in this i this was something which i got interested into and i just worked towards it so it became easier so it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter uh whether it's this specialty is difficult or not if you want it you can get it okay i have seen people right. struggling to get even medicine posts now because they were not serious about it okay Okay. If you are okay. serious about something, it doesn't matter how difficult it is. Okay, so <clears throat> I know okay. because uh, it, it. I know it sounds very fancy. It doesn't sound right. At, uh, no, it feels there. very. It feels very inspiring when you uh, tell us that, and with all your failures, right? We are able to relate to this, and feels really genuine and real. Feels like we can get there. <laughs> Absolutely I don't believe why you wouldn't uh, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't get there okay so yeah. just pick just pick your specialty just make sure this is what you're interested in and yeah. just take everything step by step that's the other thing as i mentioned before that don't rush into things okay so pick everything step by step see where you need to get okay and yeah. uh, <clears throat> don't just jump to the top that okay i've reached here i just want to do this and i don't want to do in, anything in the middle of it take your time okay right 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 so you were saying that you uh, you were able to do i mean your interests were in medicine and uh, gp training and then you yes. landed in radiology so how was that so i i still like medicine okay i like the medicine part but i like the part till diagnosis okay so when you talk about medicine the most important thing is diagnosis and management so i still like that part the part which i have realized which i don't like is the part where you have to deal with the patients and their families okay right. over the last 2 years while i've been working here okay i've just realized that i don't want to uh have this conversation with families and patients so there's only one specialty where you can avoid all of that so okay. that is radiology okay, okay? radiology so, right so because as a radiologist you're still focusing on the diagnosis part okay what's the work of a radiologist to diagnose something to come up with a diagnosis like okay you've done a scan this is the result and it can guide some management as well okay but right. your your job your job ends there you don't have to disclose any of the results to the patient or their families because when you come to uk you will realize it's not uh, like india okay where you can Uh, where everything is half a zard and you are just shouting everyone is fighting with everyone else right. it's very right. different here you you can't just go and you know start fighting with a patient or just tell them to shut up no it's not going to happen you have to be very okay. patient and even if the person you know uh, is abusive or anything like that you still can't do much okay you have to be very patient okay. which is something right. i have i have lost over the last 2 years frankly so <laughs> I decided that okay I don't want to do this I like medicine but um right. yes I can't deal with this part of medicine which is a, a very important part here in UK okay dealing with patients and their families it's very very right. important right so uh, that is absolutely right and i think we have covered almost all questions but there is this question that has been coming up a lot uh, can you take your parents to UK after lab 2 or uh, after giving i mean after settling there 
So <clears throat> when we come here, we come here on a work visa, okay, which is a tier two visa. Now it's called the healthcare visa. But anyway, so that's a tier two visa. So you can bring your wife or husband and your children on a dependent visa. Right. Unfortunately, parents are not included in your dependent visa. So the only way for your parents to come to UK is come on a visit visa. Okay, they cannot come as your direct direct dependents. All right. Okay. So okay. Um, if you want to bring your parents to UK, they will have to come here on a visit visa. Now, the thing is, if you if they have come to UK, like, for example, they are uh, applying for their first visit visa. The first mm -hmm. visa would usually be for six months. That's by mm -hmm. default. It's going to be for six months. OK, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> at least from India for different countries, it's different. But from India, right. the first visit visa is going to be for six months. Now, right. when your parents come back again next time, and they apply for a visa again. They can apply for an year-long uh, visa. Okay. 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 The third third time when they apply, they can apply for two or five-year visa. So you know okay. you get the point. So you have right. to keep applying again and again, but the okay. number of years is going to increase. So you can apply for a two-year visa, then subsequently five-year visa, and then subsequently ten-year visa. Okay. So if All your right. parents have been to UK for three or four times they might get a 10 year visa after in the next application okay but right. you can but they cannot come here as your dependent okay so only visit visa is this uh, applicable even after we have totally settled down over there yes it doesn't change the fact oh. even if you are a british okay. citizen still you cannot bring them okay and um, it's a very painful process, to be honest, if you actually want them to bring here as your dependent. Like I have seen right. people who have gone to court, they have fought the case for years. And after okay. fighting for years, they were finally able to bring them here. So it's a very painful process. Yeah. So the best way is just get them here on a visit visa. Okay. All right. That That's Thank you for answering that. Uh, and would you like to talk about the MRC, MSR, sorry, MRCP and uh, MRCS pathway? Yeah. So, right. uh, so MRCP. That's pathway. one of the questions from the audience. So we, I think we have completed all of our uh, schedule that was and all the questions that were given by the audience. And this question has been taken from here from the live. So. If you can, yeah. that would be great. So we talked about the PLAP pathway. That's the uh, that's what the majority of people come here to UK. Okay, uh, that's the main pathway. Now, if uh, the MRCP and MRCS pathway is more for candidates who have already done their post graduation in India or uh, in any of their home countries. Okay, so um, for example, if you have done your MD medicine in India. Right. You don't you you want to avoid coming to UK and start from the very beginning. Like you you don't want to start from IMT. Okay, you want right. to come here. You want to start start straight away as a registrar as a middle grade doctor. Okay. Right. So, you what you can do is you can complete all the so you need to complete all the steps of your MRCP or MRCS. Okay, that's the first requirement. Okay. okay. So you will need all these three steps. Okay. okay. After you're done with these three steps, you will apply for GMC registration. Okay. Similarly, okay. like PLAB, once you have done with all the PLAB steps, you apply for GMC registration. So if you've done all the MRCP and MRCS steps, you have to apply for GMC registration. Now, once you are GMC registered, what you can do is you can apply. So coming back to that term called SAS doctors. Okay. Right, so the right. S the SAS doctors are the ones who have come to UK via the MRCP or MRCS pathway. So okay. they are not in a training program. So for example, I came to UK with the PLAB pathway and I joined at the level of F2, but I'm not actually an F2. Similarly, okay. the people who are coming to UK via MRCS or MRCP pathway, they are coming at the level of a registrar, but they are okay. not actually a trainee registrar. So they are given right. a separate term called as SAS doctor. Okay. okay. Now, from here on, from here on, they have got two options. Right. Either they can work for, they can work as an SAS, okay, and sit for the actual training interviews, the ST4, yes. ST5, uh, ST3 or ST4 training in, uh, interviews, okay? Okay. And okay. they can quit their SAS post and become a training registrar. So if they get into training, yeah. they will do four or five years of training and become a consultant, okay? That's okay. pathway number one. 
and that will uh, and that will lead to cct so once you become once you complete your full training you will right. get a uh, uh, com- certificate of completion of training it's called a cct okay right that's your final degree so that's one option second option is many of them they just continue to work as sas doctors and right. what they do is what they do is during these years they try and get all the competencies signed so when you are in training you have got a portfolio and you need to get everything signed off for example you need right. to get your chest chest strain signed off you need to get your lumbar puncture signed off okay so what okay. they do what they do is they just print that paper and get everything signed by a consultant over the 4 or 5 years okay right right and right right they can become a consultant with this pathway just by working as an sas if they have got two or three consultants who can say that these people are come that this person is competent enough to become a consultant okay so okay. that is again that is going to take 4 or 5 years again and you need to have two or three consultants backing you for that pathway but yeah. it will it will not lead you it will not lead to you getting a cct it's a different uh, pathway we call it as the cesr pathway c e s r okay Okay. so if you are in training you will get a, com- a certificate of completion of training if you are becoming a consultant via this route without going through training you will get cesr path it is called a cesr the final degree wow. there's not mu- the, there's not much difference at least okay. not in the uk at least not in the uk okay. the difference is when people with a C- cesr they go to middle east countries and they will be paid less than the people who have got cct okay right so that's the like there are very minor differences there are no difference in the uk in the uk okay. you are a consultant doesn't matter if okay. you got a cct if you got a caesar okay, okay. so okay. this is the pathway okay. this is the pathway for people coming via mrcp or mrcs okay right and i think it is the same for the other exam we just call it p for physician and s for surgery and uh, somebody was asking about obs gynae so if you give mrc obs gynae i mean whatever the exam name is and again the whole pathway like you mentioned right i think yeah. it's the same okay yes. uh i think we have covered almost all the questions and you were amazing uh and so real that you have answered all these questions the what is uh, the disadvantages what is the reality right now the resources to study your route and your uh, journey from an fmg to now a radiology training and i'm so thankful for that and i believe everyone is the se- the session was really great and we had great audience uh, and i would really like to thank ashu kapoor also he's been uh, very wise so with Ash- all the answers yeah ashudosh kapoor uh, is my senior is friend. Here. so okay, senior. he's my senior okay so he's a um, registrar he's con- currently an endocrine registrar so he's right. been my mentor for the last two years you can say thank you so much thank you both of you would you like to say something uh, shranshu to so, all of us so uh, i mean it's very difficult the only thing i would say is very difficult to cover everything in one or two hours about uk of because course. the training training structure is so complex but obviously you need to decide what specialty you're going into because right. so even if you talk about one specialty because i had a separate session earlier on when i got into radiology training and that took me 3 hours just to talk about the radiology training itself so you right. understand it's a very very complex situation but yes. to summarize i would say if you are deciding to come to uk just start working on your journey now okay many of many people what they do is they think that okay we will do post graduation in india and then we will decide uh if you want to come to uk if you right. want to come to uk come now don't wait for uh your post graduation in india it doesn't make sense because ultimately if your goal is to come to uk why not just start on it now how is how is is it going to make a difference if you do your pg from india okay so that's the only advice i would give okay, okay. the current reality is it is difficult uh, it is getting difficult to get jobs and training posts it's not impossible still it's not impossible and the main competition in right. uk is between the asians okay uh, and <laughs> not just asians but imgs i right. would say okay right there are, uh, <clears throat> so 
it's not actually with the British graduate. It's more with the uh, IMGs now because there are so many IMGs coming in now. So yes, it is getting difficult. Okay, I'm not going to be very optimistic about everything. It is difficult, but it's not impossible. And I am the biggest example uh, um, that I've come from a very mediocre kind of background. Never been at the top of anything, but still I'm here. So it's not impossible, definitely. So if you're thinking about UK, it's still not a bad time. We don't know what will right. happen in the next four or five years, but at the moment, it's still very doable. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shitanshu, once again. And this was amazing. I hope that we can keep another session another time for all other queries coming in. And uh, I think it will be amazing. Definitely. I would be really happy to do that whenever you want. Okay. At yes, least before yes. I've got time till August. So yes. definitely. <laughs> of course. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Also, it's been a long session and the audience retention was amazing. Generally, we have around 1% of the audience, but this was great. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. hosting this Thank session. You. Okay. Take yes. care. It was really helpful. And uh, with all the comments that you can see in, see, uh, in this, uh, I think everyone loved it. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much.